Hello and welcome to a new edition of Planet Waves TV for July 11th, 2016. My name is Eric Francis Coppolino, the editor of Planet Waves, host of Planet Waves FM here with, well, some thoughts about the insanity that the planet's going through right now, particularly uh, for those of us who live in the United States. It has been just a pure, purely madness. I'm sure everyone uh, appreciated a weekend. I bet a whole bunch of you uh, didn't watch the news all weekend. I don't blame you. I didn't watch the news either. Uh, did listen to some NPR this morning, though. Uh, so I, I talked last week about the Sibley chart of the United States. Talked about that as well in, in the most recent Planet Waves FM. If you're curious about what's going on in the United States, I do suggest that you uh, that you check those out. But I have just a little more to say. And the, um, the thing to remember is this is not a, what we see happening can be identified in the astrology. The, uh, the, the violence can be the sense of confrontation, uh, the, uh, the instability can be, but ultimately what's going on is a human thing. And the astrology, if anything, merely describes it and gives us some clues to our environment rather than um, you know, like kind of laying bare what the whole thing is. Ultimately, we all have to ask ourselves what's going on and, um, in, in a sense, establish a, uh, a, a relationship uh, to our surroundings. And that needs to come from an, an inner place. And uh, regardless of what we see in the astrology and um, what things appear to be, the lack of stability right now in the United States and indeed in the world uh, is something that's rooted in the most intimate uh, inward uh, experience of what a person is. There's something about the sanctity of uh, what a, an individual human entity is that is the real thing, I think, that is uh, behind so much of the apparent outer madness that we see. Um, we in our age know very little of what it's like to be a private person. We think we do, but uh, we may not remember when you really did have your own private thoughts and you were not either sharing them all day long or looking at the private thoughts of other people ongoing um, where the things that you wrote, you wrote in your diary, that if you took a picture, it came back uh, from the photo lab a week, a week later, and uh, maybe you showed it to a couple of people uh, who were intimate enough. Uh, the, the experience that we have uh, of either broadcasting our lives, um, experiencing many other people who broadcast their lives by you know, reading what they broadcast, uh, or of living in a society where basically everything is broadcast to everyone all the time are having an impact on the inner life of people in our culture. And this is creating um, massive instability. And it, it's difficult to see this as being a, a, a thing that is coming from the inside of who we are out. Uh, but but that is what I would propose to you. And um, w when I talk about the astrology in a minute, I'm going to show you a bit of that. But uh, to my thinking, the uh, extreme of violence that we're seeing, and re remember, violence can always get more extreme. Uh, it uh, it's it's never as bad as it gets with um, with violence, which is why when we're in a violent environment or state of mind or um, have any influence at all, the uh, the thing to do is to pay attention and figure out what's going on. And that takes introspection. But uh, what I'm saying is that our capacity for introspection has been severely weakened. And the internet has played a role in that. And um, many other factors, you know, all electronic media play play a role in that, but never have we been so flipped inside out so fast to the point where 
uh, the the whole idea of, of like inner being uh, doesn't really mean that much, and and we might think it does, and we might take yoga class and focus inwardly, uh, but that can be somewhat intangible, and um, we would need a lot of yoga classes to um, cover enough people to get it to the threshold level where this inner awareness I'm talking about could could uh, could take off. So um, let's hold that thought. I'm going to come back to it on Tuesday uh, on Planet Waves TV. And by the way, I, I wrote an article focusing on the subject that I published Thursday night in between the police shootings in, uh, in, in Louisiana and um, Minnesota and the sniper attack in Texas uh, later that night. So this piece was written like right exactly between them and published it. And it, it, it goes into detail on the, uh, let's say the gutted capacity for inner awareness that we're currently working with and, and struggling with. Okay, so in terms of how this is uh, illustrated and how it, how it shows up in the astrology, Let's bear in mind that um, we've been talking a lot about this uranus Eris conjunction, which has been building for years. That's what, that's what it looks like in the most simplified format. And, uh, the, and the way in which uh, th this has been about a kind of a identity chaos. Now, the, this kind of um, effect has some mojo behind it. It's not happening out of nowhere, and, and it goes back quite a long way. So it's not a, it's not a new thing that's happening. Uh, Uranus has been in, uh, rather, Eris has been in Aries since the 1920s. Uranus has been in Aries since 2011, right after the uh, 2011, uh, just as that, that threshold of the smartphone took over. And so I think that this uh, is illustrating identity chaos in the style, in the style of uh, technology, Uranus, and uh, scrambling what a, a person is, and also the seeking of, uh, of identity through um, through some form of con conflict or confrontation. That's a very Eris-like idea. Um, and the this thing is a slow, slow aspect. It, it it's it's a once it happened last ninety years ago. Eris moves slowly, very slowly. Uranus moves slowly. So it's just kind of staying where it is. At the same time, Mars is in Scorpio. Uh, this is at about 24 degrees, 23, 24, 23, as of, as of right now. Uh, so these are all in the same, same degree of their respective sign. Uh, Mars, a 23 plus Scorpio, right where it was when it stationed direct a week and a half ago. That, that you know, supposedly is in the past. It's not actually not in the past because it's still sitting in the same degree of the zodiac where, where it was uh, when, when Mars retrograde ended um, two weeks ago, Wednesday. And uh, Uranus and Eris, of course, they don't move very much at all. They're just basically sitting there. And so we have this aspect between normally fast-moving Mars and normally slow-moving and currently slow-moving uh, Uranus and Eris sitting there. And so it's as if this aspect is um, la lasting like uh, 10 times longer than it should. Mar Mars would normally clip by, it would, it would peak, it would it would build and peak over the course of a week, but Mars is sitting in the same degree of Scorpio, and uh, it is slow, which which gives it emphasis, uh, a f form of power. It's it's moving, you know, more more like Pluto. It's moving more like an outer planet, and furthermore, Mars is in Scorpio right now, and that's one of the signs that it's most closely associated with its traditional ruling planet of Scorpio. And so Mars is really, really influential. And it's hanging out, making this aspect called a quincunx, 150 degree aspect, to the uranus Eris conjunction. It's right here. And furthermore, Mars also rules Aries. So it's, it's, it's associated with uh, the, the sign where this epic, you know, once in a lifetime conjunction 
is happening. So pretty much everything that we're seeing right now and every analysis is kind of spinning on the axis of the of this Mars uh, quincunx Uranus Eris. Now the thing with the quincunx is it's 150 degrees. An, an opposition would have it be about there, but instead it's one sign past an opposition. That's 150 degrees. The symbol is that little like that. And an opposition is supposed to be a direct relationship, but the problem with an opposition is it can act like a blind spot, like you don't really see uh, what's actually going on because it's an opposition. When you move the planets out of opposition and, and into a different form of an opposition, which is a, a quincunx, uh, then the, the, the relationship between the parties becomes more clear. And so here we have uh, a picture of a group, by the way, indicated partly by Uranus, which can, uh, which has enough association to Aquarius to represent groups and technology, right? And it's in Aries. The background field is Aries. This is the field of the self. You, Aries has been working its way through this sign since the first radio station got licensed, right? So we know there's something here about the about electronic media. Now, all of a sudden, it's taking a conjunction from Uranus, which is adding to the chaos factor of two planets that will, under normal circumstances, be uh, chaotic, subversive, and disruptive, and, and make it difficult to figure out what's going on. And uh, they're, they're acting together, they're acting on Aries, and then they're being acted on by Mars. And so it's almost as if Mars got kicked out of Aries, and it's hanging up in hanging out up in Scorpio, where now it's sort of like been cast out of its own home, uh, and it's finding itself in a, a new home, not quite as familiar, not quite as um, uh, ordinary as as Aries. Right? Scorpio brings in some really deep material. Scorpio makes it necessary to go within. Aries, not so. Aries can live in the external world all the time. It can be very driven by externals and uh, lack introspection. Scorpio has no choice but to have introspection. And so the, uh, the implication here is that this relationship is about the, re the relationship of the self, Mars, in, in Scorpio, to this kind of g group or what you might more accurately call mass consciousness. It's not, I've been calling it groups in my writing, but the reality is that the, that a uh, completely undifferentiated, unindividuated bunches of folks are a mass, not a group. The difference is the difference between a, a committee where everyone has a role and the crowd in a baseball stadium where the entire crowd is just sitting there and no one really has a role except to get up and cheer when everyone else does. Uh, and, and to any extent there might be individualism, you'll get your hot dog your way, but that has nothing to do with the game that's going on on the, on the field. Okay, so we see these two things here acting on, acting on one another, and it's a lot of tension between individuals and groups. And so we saw that, for example, in someone taking the law into his own hands and becoming a kind of a vigilante sniper uh, last week uh, t to get, get retribution for what was being done to his group, black people. And so uh, th there is a, um, a lot of violent confrontation between individuals and groups, and some, to some extent between groups now we're seeing uh, th this. Um, and th there's more to get into here. Uh, for example, th the way blacks and Latinos are handled in the news. Uh, but in any event, think of this as... Um, individuals attempting to claim back their identity. And that's all of us. That is all, all of us in this environment. Now let's look a little more complex chart. Same, same, uh, same time in this chart, you can see the setup here of Mars uh, and the uranus Eros conjunction. This is in Aries, this is in Scorpio, right near Sag, but it's still in Scorpio. But now, now not only is there just this one aspect, but Mars is about to make a trine to Chiron, and Mercury is about to make a trine to, in fact, it is making a trine to Mars and about to make a trine to Chiron. 
And then all of this is also being fed by this power source down here. So th there's a number of ways in which the energy is running, but for the most part, uh, energy is flowing from this into all three of these points, and then there's a kind of a circuit among these three points. And uh, this is, first of all, cautionary. Uh, it is cautionary in terms of saying, watch the trends and uh, make corrections about what you're doing based on the, the trends that, that you see. If you see things going in one direction and you don't like that direction, gradually move them in another direction. And I am, uh, I am speaking personally here. Um, the, the fact of this much water in the chart, and there's other many other factors involved in, in water signs, is, uh, first of all, a reminder that this is on the level of feelings. This is on, on the level of, again, water really is a, as close as we get in astrology to something that is genuinely uh, about inner awareness. It may be the most inwardly uh, aware of the, uh, of, of the elements. It, it is um, considered the pool of the emotions whenever you see it in the, in the tarot. And, uh, and, and generally speaking, water is the, the inner reflection. And so the water signs are, excuse me, highlighted m m really like a flood now. There's so much in Pisces, uh, including uh, Nessus, Neptune, the South Node, Borisisi, and Chiron all are, are in Pisces right now, in addition to the one planet I just put in, Chiron. And so this is saying, watch your feelings. Uh, the thing, really observe, the, the one thing to keep in mind, I think, as, uh, as American society goes through these uh, spasms, basically, um, is that there are many factors involved and that you are having your own experience that is different from the experience of, of other people. And so if in any way you're seeking individuality, the one, one place to start might be to tune into your personal experience as it differs uh, from any, anyone else or any group. You have no uh, need to even compare. So we can skip the as it differs and you feel how you feel. What, what you do with how you feel is a, another question entirely. But the I think the fearful, uh, shocking aspect of, of all, all of this uh, seemingly uncontrollable uh, stuff going on that uh, th that a, a good few people are saying with good reason that they don't like the way that this is going um, and a, from, from a much wider cultural standpoint is to pay attention inwardly and address your own fear. Uh, the Internet's not really going to be a good place to do that one-on-one -on -one, face to face conversations uh, where you can let your fear speak uh, the, the the problem with fear is we tend to suppress it and deny it a voice uh, or let it take charge of the cockpit and let it run away with us and and I'm uh, suggesting that you let your fear speak that you spend as much time with your notebook as you can and that you do the things that bring you inward into yourself, whatever your art is, whether it is going to nature, whether it is um, hanging out with someone uh, or a couple of people that you like. Um, you might find it to be really therapeutic to uh, cl clean your kitchen, uh, clean out your fridge, go shopping, and make a meal for yourself or for yourself and some friends. So the reason I say that is because there's so much emphasis right now on the sign cancer. Mercury is, uh, is still there, and um, what else is uh, going on here? Uh, Venus is still in cancer. The sun is in cancer. And, and by the way, one thing that is um, going to happen is that the sun is going to pass through this whole aspect pattern this week. And, uh, and, and make aspects. Actually, the sun's not in Scorpio. The sun's down here in, in Cancer. But the sun is going to en enter this whole arrangement this week and, uh, and, and raise the temperature. And uh, I would say that taking care of yourself and your brood uh, is, is the thing called for. This is not a time for heroic action. Uh, it's a time to be aware. It's a time to feel, a time to notice. And... The 
uh, the temptation to cut off, and, and indeed the necessity to cut off, is uh, really strong right now. I, I get it. And uh, th- therefore, if you, you need to cut off, you want to cut off and bring your awareness somewhere um, wh- where you can actually feel yourself and, and feel your being. Hence, I'm, I'm suggesting intimacy, uh, food, art, music, whatever, uh, whatever it is that you, uh, you do. The other thing is that um, Mars and Scorpio has a sexual connotation. I mean, there's no getting around that. Mars has the connotation. Scorpio has that connotation. Everything else in, involved has that. And m- my take is, and I, I've been w- watching this for a while, but it's never seemed more obvious that m- being in contact with your sexual existence is one of the most important antidotes to violence on a personal and cultural level. Uh, uh, most of the violence we experience, as far as I can see, is some form of misdirected sexual energy. Uh, there's reasons why sexual energy is misdirected. There's m- many reasons, but for w- one thing, um, We've been forbidden to even talk about the ways to express sexual energy in healthy, wholesome ways. So we don't really see many models for that, and we can't really have the the conversation. And uh, but what I can tell you is that focusing inwardly will also include for perhaps you uh, focusing on your sexual being, not your identity, your actual feelings, and the wherever they lead you, whether they lead you to uh, desire for cozy, love, cuddly, and snuggly type of sexuality, or whether they lead you to the most uh, seemingly outrageous uh, kink, fun, pervy, whatever you secretly like to uh, get, get into. That spot in your mind will help ground you in who you are. Are, and that is the thing that we need right now. Reading and writing will also be very helpful to that end. So, uh, there are some suggestions. I'm taking it super slow here tonight, not wanting to uh, bring in too many astrological concepts because that's really not the issue. Uh, the issue is us and what we are feeling. We will do our best to uh, keep pace with things here at Planet Waves as best we can. Uh, I'm planning an edition of uh, Planet Waves FM for Tuesday evening. By the way, uh, we run a program called Democracy Now! on our main blog. If you go to planetwaves.net, just click into main page. For those of you who are Planet Waves readers, it's the typical front page of Planet Waves you see every day. Uh, We run the Amy Goodman program. It's called Democracy Now! The War and Peace Report. Um, And if you need a way to get news that is presented in a sensitive way, Uh, Without commercial interruption, uh, we post that for you every day. Our our Amy, Amy Elliott, posts it every day for you. Uh, That's what I have to say at the moment. Again, I will see you again. uh, All things going well on Tuesday evening. Thanks for tuning in. Love to you. And bye for now. Mm -hmm.